This video is to show how to do a top end and top end only. This is a 2002 Viper. So you can do it with the engine in, not taking too much off. Um, so the first thing we can do is take the power valves off. You only have to take these four Allens off. Uh, it should help to use PB Blaster on these because uh, they can snap off. So be careful taking these out. So there's three power valves to take off. And then there's the cylinder head. That's pretty basic. There's all these bolts taking that off. There's a coolant hose. Take your spark plugs off. And then if you need a rubber mallet, just tap this up. This should all come off. And now we're down to uh, the base. So loosen these. They're 14 millimeter. And it might be easier just to do one at a time. One of these, uh, let's see. One of these is designed to come out from here. I'm not sure which one. It says right there. Yeah. So take all, all four of these bolts off here. And then uh, and then you've got your exhaust manifold. You should have already sp sprayed PB Blaster on these. And uh, some of those are a little hard to get to. I use a Get in there with a 10 millimeter ratchet to get these off. And once you get this, this manifold is all one piece. You get that off. Now you have access to start taking the jugs off. So then you loosen these off and these should just pull right up and off. And if you only have to do one, you know, once you get your head off, you can take a look. And like this, this cylinder is looks really good. And the tendency for these uh, Vipers is the middle piston gets fucked up. So uh, you can, if these are okay, then just don't do anything to these. Uh, but typically, you want to do, if you got it apart, might as well do pistons, rings, bearing, and gasket. So once this comes off. Um, you can take this base gasket off. These are metal gaskets. And it is possible to reuse them. Of course, it will be recommended to, to um, always use new gaskets. But take a good close look at them. You might be able to reuse them. Now, when you go to take the pistons off, um, if you're not doing the crank, put a towel in here so you don't drop that pin. So the next step is to there's a piston clip right in there. I use two little screwdrivers to pry that out. And be careful because that thing will pop and disappear if you plan on reusing it. And you don't want it to drop down in there. So then once you get that off, the next thing is step is to take <clears throat> the piston rod pin out. If it's in there tight. Uh, another trick that I've done is you can put a socket in there and put a bigger socket on this end and then use a clamp. You don't want to be hammering on that to get that out. So use a small socket to push and a big socket that it can go into and if you can get, get some clamps in there just clamp it and it should come out if it's not totally seized. So you do that with each each piston and then when you put the new ones on, the first thing you do is make sure your rings are in place. There are a couple of notches where the ends of the rings go. There's an arrow. The arrow should go towards the front of the engine. And once you get this off, you're going to check for bearing play up and down. So this one has bearing play and these cranks are very expensive. I think they'll get a, a rebuilt one. The problem with these cranks is they have welded pins. Not many people want to work on them. But if you don't have up, not, not side to side, they'll have side to side. It's up and down play. So check your up and down play. If you've got the machinery to do it, check the up and down play. Now for reassemble, you can put your, your base gasket on. And then 
Um, and then re you're going to be replacing this uh, pin bearing. Of course, you want the crank spun up so you can get better access to it. <clears throat> so this is, should be all in the all the way up position. And then you're going to put one of the uh, the clips in there, piston ring clips in there, and then you're going to put it on. <clears throat> and then you're going to slide the the pin. You just got to try to get through the bearing. Use uh, two-stroke oil. Lather everything up with two-stroke oil. Everything inside of that, the bearing, the pin. <clears throat> and you're going to push that pin right in through until it bottoms out over there. And then, once again, keep a cloth in here to get that clip in there. Make sure that clip is all the way in. And then uh, you're going to do that with all three... all three pistons and then when you put this back on just all you have to do is just push in with your fingers on the rings and that should help and of course you want two stroke oil all around this get everything nice and lubed up and those uh, pistons go back in fairly easily and then they just pop in so make sure your base gasket is on correctly it does go on a certain way so this is on the Vipers. So not only is it side to side, but it's top and bottom. So it says right there, A right there. And the same thing with the head gasket. There's certain notches here, A and B. So then once you get everything on and back together, the base nuts are, that's your torque on the base nuts. And can you read that? This is cylinder heads. You're going to do the first round like this, and the second round, the final round like that, and that's the sequence to do it in. And then uh, once you get that back together, uh, put your plugs in, your wires, and you're going to have to bleed the. Uh, the coolant system because you've lost some coolant so typically how that's done on the vipers is make sure that's full up and then um, turn your engine on assuming that your engines running fine um, and then uh, the vipers they're told to keep that closed let it get up to temperature then do you Take the seat off. There's two bolts inside here. One there and one on the other side. Take the seat off and then in the back, in the back center is a bleed screw. And you just jack the back end up and while it's running, loosen that screw and some air will come out. And uh, do that a couple of times and it should, that should work to, to uh, bleed your coolant system. And then, um, and then you can double check your coolant level on there. Another thing I do before I fire it up, since it might be starved of gas, is I get a little, uh, I have a bottle that just sprays in a little bit of uh, gas. I just put a little bit of gas in each cylinder just to help prime it. <clears throat> and then uh, another thing you can do be well, before doing that is do a compression test. Hopefully uh, everything will work just fine. And uh, then it should fire up. I'm going to do a uh, next video will be on how to do the crank.